Hi, my name is Jesper and I'm part of the ST Touch DFX team. In this video, I will give you an introduction to the gauge widget, uh, which has been added to the Touch DFX version 4.16. I have a new Touch DFX application in the designer. Um, I'll add a box just as a background. Like this, and then I'll add the gauge. You can find it uh, here. We'll put it in the center. You can see the gauge already has a, a background image and a needle. It is uh, it has a style called the standard gauge one. Here we also have a standard gauge two. So as all other widgets, uh, when you have selected a style, you it will preset some of the properties for that widget. So in this case, the background image, uh, the rotation center, uh, the angles, and so on. Uh, as for all other widgets, uh, you can press the question mark in the top here and you'll see a link to the uh, TouchDFX documentation page describing this particular widget. Here you'll find all the key uh, properties, uh, the description of those. You will also find a link in the bottom to the API uh, reference for that particular widget. Okay, so uh, let's have a look at the properties set for this uh, standard gauge one. Uh, the background image, where it is the, the background uh, here, of course. Uh, the rotation center, well, that is where the rotation center of the gauge is. In this case, where the, the image of the needle will be persistent. So you can see I can, I can change it here if I want to. Um, the angle is the angle in which the minimum and the maximum values of the gauge will will be represented at. So you can see we have a value range here. So the minimum is zero and the maximum is a hundred. And if I put this to zero, you can see we are hitting the minus 90 degree angle here. And uh, similarly, if I write a hundred, it will go like this. Um, so we can try and run the simulator and see that we get this behavior that we see on the canvas in the designer. <clears throat> okay, so we do. So we have uh, the needle positioned uh, a bit out here. So we can type in 125 again, and we see that it will be positioned in the in the center. <clears throat> For the needle itself, uh, we see we have these properties down here. So we have, of course, the image of the needle. Uh, we have the rotation center of the needle. So that is the point in the needle, which will be put on top of the rotation center of, uh, of the gauge itself. Um, then we have two properties here. So that is the rendering algorithm when the needle is moving and the rendering algorithm when the needle is steady, so not moving. Um, the needle itself is drawn by a texture mapper widget, uh, which is the same texture mapper as you can add uh, here, um, like this. Um, so it's the same way of, of drawing it. Uh, it has two options, so nearest neighbor, which is pretty fast, to, to render, but not completely uh, perfect in image quality. And the bilinear interpolation is much better quality, but it's, it is a, a bit uh, harder on the, on the microcontroller to, to draw. Okay, so that was the basic setup of the properties for this gauge widget. So let us try to make it update uh, the value of the of the gauge. Um, I'm now opening the project here. I'm opening it with your studio, but you can open it, uh, of course, in whatever editor you would like to. Uh, so here I have the header file of the screen one view. So you can see if I open the screen one view base, this is where I have my box one and my, uh, my gauge one. Okay, so to 
update it uh, during execution, well, normally you would have some sort of uh, readout of uh, some meter and you would uh, that would enter into the, the model class. You would propagate it to the presenter and onto the view. But here I'm just going to simulate it by uh, implementing the handle tick event. So that is uh, called each tick in TouchDFX. Um, so I implement it in the, in the CPP file. Um, so if I just do like this, so I can use update value. Uh, let me just get the value, the current value of the gauge plus one, and it takes uh, an argument called duration. So that is uh, the duration of the update. So how long will it take to reach its uh, this value? So in this case, I'll just do an instant update, which is uh, entering the value uh, zero. Compiling and uh, running. So we'll see it animate to the maximum and then just stay there because I'm just adding one to whatever value it has. As you might remember, we put in the value uh, range 0 to 100. So if I go back to my code here and let's say add a modifier value. Uh, here, so now I add one to it. But let's say so if uh, the current value is either the maximum or the minimum, so equals zero, or if it uh, is equal hundred, then I'll change the direction. So modifier multiplied by minus one. So we go back and forth here. Okay, so, but we, we put in the value range here in the design so from zero to hundred, maybe it's not the best design to just have a magic number here, zero and hundred. So if I would like to change that, I could use the get range um, um, method in, in the gauge widget. Um, so if I have a minimum value and a max value here, so I could say gauge one, get range, so this one uh, will get you the range and it uh, takes as an argument a reference to an integer. So I can add my minimum value and my maximum value here and I will get those. And then I could put in minimum value and maximum value instead. Okay, So a little bit nicer. So this is just to show you that there is a range of uh, of a method here, you can you can pick and choose from to to get the values from the the gauge widget itself, and it still still works. Okay, let's look at <coughs> another feature uh, of the gauge widget, which is uh, the arc. So you are not limited to having in a, a needle or a texture mapper uh, changing angle. You can also add an arc to your uh, to your gauge. I'll demonstrate that by adding a uh, another gauge to my uh, application. I'll put that one here. So if I select the style two, it will show exactly that. So here, if I change this, you can see. The, the it's not only the needle who, which is changing, but also this uh, arc here. The behavior and properties of the arc is uh, very similar to that of the needle. So down here you see it now says use arc. Um, it is basically a circle known as a like the, the circle widget itself. So here we can either choose an image or a, or a column. Uh, in this case, it's an image. So we can go and 
have a look at the image. So we have this background with the gray background for the arc. And then we have this arc here, which is a circle, which kind of uh, changes uh, thickness. So we use that one. We have a set arc position, which places the arc inside of the gauge. So in this case, it's because the image of this arc is not the size of the gauge itself. So we need to place it in the correct uh, location. Uh, and then just as a circle, we have a radius and a line width and a cap style also, if you want that. Uh, you can position the arc on top of the needle, force it to be on top of the needle if, uh, if you want to. Yes, and let's just make it animate just as gauge one. We have the same value range and the same initial value. So we should be able to just go here and uh, copy this line here. So the modifier will still work. Uh, if not, we, we needed one for the gauge two as well. So let's uh, compile here. Run. And yeah. We see it animate. <laughs> so that is the basic settings for the arc. Uh, if you want to learn more about it, play, play around with it and see what will happen. So uh, in this case, we could try to add one in, in the gauge one. Um, so I have here, so let's say radius uh, 50 and bind with so zero, it will be a full arc. Uh, if it says two, we'll do like this. Uh, we can make it a bit bigger, like this. Uh, six, the round ending. And it should be, just to run the simulator and you'll see that it now has an arc as well. So this is just a color, so not an image like this one over here. So just one plain simple color, whereas this has uh, variant in, in, in the uh, thickness, but also in the color, I believe. Okay, but uh, yeah, play around with it and see what you can uh, make of it. The last thing I would like to show you is um, how to use this duration when updating. <clears throat> so if we jump to the, the code once again, um, We'll need to have a, an integer uh, tick counter here, so we can we can uh, hold the update uh, uh, for one of the gauges. So let's have here. So we have a tick counter now that is increasing each each tick. So here for number two, we will say if tick counter uh, models uh, like, uh, what should we say, 30 is equal zero. Then we want to update, so only each 13th time. So we can see how that looks with the duration of zero here. So uh, that will be an instant update once in a while. You can see it moves. If we change the, okay, so maybe this modifier thing is, is a little bit boring. We only see it move uh, slightly. Uh, so if we say plus 30 times the modifier, then we'll see a bigger change, I hope. Yeah, like this. Okay, if we change the duration, so uh, let's say we'll use 20 ticks for the update and, um, and then we'll have 10 ticks of pause and then run again. See like this, it'll move in a nice behavior. We can change the um, the movement here. So if we say uh, activate this one and uh, then the easing, we put an easing back so we could have like a cubic with the ease in out. Generate the code back here. 
pile again. And now the, the movement of the needle will be slightly different following that uh, particular easing equation. <coughs> So this feature is, is useful if you are not receiving new values from for your gauge all the time. If you get that each tick, well then of course you you, you should just use instant updates or, or, or close to, to to each tick. If you have like a second between uh, your readings, well then a, a an animation to the new value will probably look, uh, look better. The last thing I would like to show you is uh, the example for, for gauge. So if you create a new project, uh, you will find gauge example. Try to, to have a look here uh, at this. So here you have three examples of, of different gauges. So let me just compile it. You have three different screens with each of, of, its, uh, of uh, each gauge. So first of all, we have this one. So here you see a needle and actually an arc, but in this case, just showing uh, dots. Second one, um, you have you may you do a readout of the current value of the gauge and then you update an, an uh, text and actually also changes color on this icon, or changes the image of the icon. The last one is just one big arc. Uh, underneath an, a big needle. Okay, that's all from me. Hope you enjoyed the, this video and uh, uh, want to have a look at the, the case widgets that has been added.